Welcome back and special greetings to all of the viewers in Sweden. I see the numbers of viewers in Sweden are always strong and I receive a lot of comments from Sweden. Of course, Sweden being one of the great gun making countries and great hunting countries. And as a footnote, I remember in university we studied all the different programs and systems of government that Sweden had and has, which were kind of a model for the rest of the world in some ways. Anyhow, I guess what's happened, based on your notes, is something derailed over there with guns and um, all kinds of changes coming. I can't really remark intelligently about it because I don't know the details, but it doesn't sound too good to me. Anyway, we're lucky on this side of the pond, and um, Sweden, Swedish rifles have always been, to me, fantastic, and they should go back to the uh, way they were with the gun industry and make them again. We need them in the market. This one here is a Carl Gustav. And before I get going on showing you these rifles, I was talking to my collector friends, and my goodness, what a diversity of model numbers and names for these Husqvarna's. This is a Carl Gustav. It's not not that many models, um, although they marketed even Zauer 80s and Zauer 90s under the Carl Gustav name. Krikos were also marketed by Carl Gustav. But the Husqvarna's, they were marketed over here by Tradewinds, they were marketed by Smith & Wesson. So probably the safest thing I can do is just mention the general model numbers and names and then what a particular market might have. Uh, you'll know better than I do. But this is yeah, one of my favorite bolt-action rifles and just a beautifully made firearm long before the Tika T3. The Carl Gustav was that slick. It's just a fantastic action. It's not a controlled round feed, but it has a typical Sako extractor and a dual action locking lugs. I always thought the stock design was exceptional and the checkering. You have three panels of checkering and probably not many of you out there checker like hand checker. This is hand checkering. And this was made probably in the 70s. But checkering is a big deal. And right, you know, nowadays it's done by lasers and, and um, machines. And for a while there was impressed checkering. Anyway, this is hand cut checkering. Large, generous panels. It's all cut properly. The, um, the grip is, is more or less a closed grip. And I've never owned one of these that I've owned quite a number over the years. They all shoot extremely well and if you have a chance to buy them I, I think you should. Uh, this one being in, in excellent or even exceptional condition. The floor plate is aluminum and there's some decorative engraving which some people like. I mean it looks okay. It's not um, critical or anything like that. And apparently people are telling me that this action is so great that Sabati in Italy, and there are different pronunciations for that name, continue to make a version of this Carl Gustav in Italy, of course. <clears throat> but I thought I'll show you this one first because in some ways it, it's a lot like the current production. Uh, no controlled round feet, so it's a push feed rifle. I'm not sure what rifling system they used for the for the barrel. It might have been button rifled. I wouldn't be surprised. But whatever they do, it has everything that you would want in a bolt action rifle. And these change hands like for around a grand or you know maybe more, maybe less, depending on condition. Just a just an altogether great rifle. And because I'm over here, this is a what I call universal scope, four power Leopold. I mean, you really can't go wrong with a four power Leopold. It does just about everything that needs to be done. Um, of course, these days the scopes are getting bigger and bigger and higher and higher magnification. But truly, when you're in the field, the real hunting distances that we encounter, I would say generally are under 300 yards or meters. And um, a four power is more than sufficient, and you don't lose field of view. I'm sure you all know more about this than I do. But I thought I'd show you that one first. And um, so that's the Carl Gustav. And now here's now here it gets confusing. 
So it's this rifle is just marked Husqvarna. That's this made in Sweden. This is clearly marked made in Sweden. Beautiful Mauser 98 action, just impeccably machined and finished. Just a perfect rifle. And if you want controlled round feet, I don't think you could find a better rifle. Now this grade, um, in some manuals, I even have my one of my collector's books, and I have a dozen different collector's books. And even from the books, it's hard to tell because this one isn't marked. This one just says Husqvarna, uh, made in Sweden and so on. There's no model designation. So the people tell me this stock design, this flattened forend and the dimple here is an imperial grade. But again, I don't pretend to know. I just collect the guns and then, um, you know, when I go to sell them, usually the buyer knows more than I do. This one was really never used. The, the, the uh, screws were never even taken out of the receiver. And you can tell when a screw has been removed. But exceptional Mauser 98 action, um, made in Sweden, everything the way it should be. Release floor plate and the trigger guard. <clears throat> the trigger is excellent. Same for the Carl Gustav. I can understand that um, being, a, being a hunting country that um, has some rough terrain and challenging climate, this would be a rifle that would never let you down. And I'm not sure what you know a lot of people are using now. Some are, are writing me that there's a shift to straight pull actions. And that's fine. We'll have to see whether that lasts. There's definitely a speed of fire. So that one in the foreground uh, is the Imperial grade. And some people say it's a 6,000 and different model numbers. But if it was marketed by Trade Winds um, or High Standard or Smith & Wesson, you'll have different markings. But if you, you know, if you have a good look at the rifle, I guess is the point I'm making, uh, you'll be able to discern which model you have. But these are all extremely high quality rifles, far better than any T3, um, I, I think superior to a Remington 700 for sure for hunting purposes. Just great. And then this one, um, you probably recognize, um, I think this is maybe the nicest of the Mauser 98 based actions. This is the crown grade. Um, this one, somebody put a recoil pad on and you'll often see recoil pads fortunately they didn't cut the stock they just added the recoil pad so the length of pull is like 14 and a half inches which is a little much but I can re you know I can get somebody to put a new recoil pad or just a regular pad and you can see the stock design the checkering everything is first class I mean however it was and there are a lot of stories that I've been told about how Sweden um, became a first-class gun-making country and, and hunting country. Uh, but probably that's too much to repeat here and I couldn't even remember it. I'd have to get out some books. But um, again, floor plate. The checkering uh, was a little bit beaten up and there's no need to... It's, it's so easy to recut checkering. I actually do it myself. It's kind of... Um, it's, it's like a form of meditation. <laughs> you have to go slow and you can get it back so that it's as good or better than original. So anyway, that's the crown grade. Um, I should tell you the calibers. So this is, actually this is interesting day. All three of these are 270s, which is probably one of those universal cartridges, depending on how you see these things. And um, so Mauser 98, the claw, controlled round feed, the Carl Gustav push feed, and the Imperial grade control rail feed and Mauser 98. And then, strangely, the one that for some reason captured my imagination is this um, Stiga or Stiga. You'll have to forgive my pronunciation. It's S T I G A. This is a Mauser 96, and what a fantastic rifle this is. I can uh, no scope. Um, it's the, it hasn't been, dr been drilled and tapped, so I just use it with iron sights, but the target thinks that I'm using a scope. So accurate, just exceptional, and um, this is 30 odd 6 so some people would say that it's maybe too weak, and I disagree. Actually, the 96, as you all know in Sweden, 
and most of the rest of the world knows, and 6.5 by 55 is just a brilliant cartridge, and you can still see this is a, a typical cleaned up military floor plate, so to remove the floor plate you have to put a bullet in this hole, then the floor plate slides forward. So maybe not as convenient as a push button floor plate, but really, who cares when you're hunting. And everything on this one, so practical and excellent. The Mauser, this 96 not being so bulky. And it cocks on closing. You know, I'm not sure why there's all, there must be a reason, but um, I like the cock on closing system um, a lot. Lee Enfield has it. I've never noticed a problem with it, and you can see um, will shift back to the action and when I open the action it of course springs open um, because I'm actually cocking it when I close the bolt and that's not the case on the Mauser 98 on the Mauser 98 I'm cocking the striker when I open the bolt so that creates a lot of resistance to bolt opening um, in fact I have a lot to say about that but not right now anyhow this is the the 96 and um, very simple, reliable, excellent rifle. And you can see Stiga or Stiga um, put some excellent front sights. Um, the hood is quite dramatic, but lets in a lot of light and controls the, the shadows as well. So that's good. And it, you know, again, the markings are minimal. It does say Stiga Sweden. I have no idea whether the cameraman can focus in on this. Can you focus in on this um, marking here? It's kind of a unique um, uh, trademark that they have. And someone explained to me the whole history of the gentleman that started Stiga or Stiga. Maybe please let me know how to pronounce the name properly. But just a, a fantastic Swedish rifle. I could hunt with this 30 out 6 probably for the rest of my life in, in this action and never really want for anything. It's excellent. And the, the other day I was out um, uh, with my brother actually and we were, we were just shooting at 200 yards. Of course I have the iron sights and at 200 yards they set up some some kind of uh, steel plates that are resistant to bullet impacts, you know the ones I mean. And I had no problem hitting every time. And these plates are only maybe four inches by six inches, so fairly small area. Um, I was lucky, and when I was shooting at 100 yards, I could see it was shooting high. So that meant I could hold at six o'clock, and six o'clock hold, if you know what that is, and I could hit the 200 yard um, steel plates, no problem. Which, which says a lot for the gun, it, it, and, it, and it was offhand shooting, not, you know, not hunched over a sandbag or anything like that. It, it's just, just perfect. So that is kind of a very broad, general review of the rifles of an exceptional country and people, and um, a gun-making people. It's, it's um, not the easiest thing setting up a gun-making industry, and I hope that I misunderstood some of your letters and that uh, you know hunting remains um, completely acceptable and uh, popular uh, another fellow well some people were writing from Finland and some people were writing from Norway and it sounded like some kind of change or transformation is going on I'm not sure it's for the better but like I said I try not to comment because I really don't know but you know aside from all the other aspects of hunting if you get rid of hunting and get rid of guns which would be, I think, unimaginable and unnecessary. Game populations um, are out of control in no time. Very quickly you have um, government officers in helicopters like um, culling game uh, when you could be selling licenses and, uh, and, and uh, tradition can continue, not to mention the loss of meat. Anyway, I probably shouldn't talk about these things, but it comes to mind because I received so much correspondence and I try to integrate it into what I know and make sense of it. So I hope things continue. I'm sure I've missed lots of Swedish guns. In fact, I had a gentleman over here a while ago, who's, I forget how his age, I was chatting with him and he presented a whole history and um, I haven't had a chance to, to share that with you, but I will. Anyway, thank you very much for, for watching. 
and I hope that's of some value. Sorry I have to catch my breath, I still have this a little bit of pneumonia left over. And um, please subscribe, it's getting more and more important for the channel to build a strong subscriber base, that's important. It doesn't cost you anything to click that button. I know I'm a broken record. And please, if you can, join me on Patreon, it would be great. And let me know what other Swedish rifles, there are lots that I'm missing, obviously, that I haven't included, 22s and so on. Um, but let me know and I can do another one. But I thought I should say something about these Husqvarna bolt actions because there's so much in demand in collector circles. The price seems to continuously go up as the modern rifles come out and their quality doesn't necessarily decline. But the modern rifles are not like these rifles. And when you handle them and when you hunt with them, you know what I'm talking about. And the um, Carl Gustav, if I didn't say it already, I wanted to say it at the end is um, like far smoother than, than the Tika T3. You just don't run across them and there aren't train loads of these around. In other words, um, as the saying goes, there's nothing constant except change and that applies to these guns as well. But is any one of these uh, worth buying? Absolutely. You will not lose money on these, these quality firearms. Um, there's just nothing like them around anymore and not at the use prices or any reasonable prices. Anyway, that's a lot that I have to say about these guns, obviously. I've always been impressed with the Swedish rifles and I hope that that industry continues. And thank you very much for watching. I look forward to receiving your comments and corrections as the case may be. Thanks again. Bye-bye.